of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, and you still not, do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be with you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. feel once again alone. As all faithfuls do, they gather in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Weeks, or Pentecost, as it is known to Greek-speaking Jews. The celebration actually originated as an agriculture feast and festival to offer the fruits of the fresh grains, and harvests. By the first century, it also celebrated the giving of the law to Moses at Sinai. While the disciples are gathered, suddenly there is a loud, ear-splitting 
noise, not unlike that train horn, I would imagine. And times of fire rest on each of the disciples' heads. Jesus' followers hear the sound first before they see his flames. It's the sound of a spirit traveling faster than light. Just imagine all, what all these disciples have been through and the trauma that they've experienced. And just in 40 days, and deep-seated grief and fear for their lives, and incredible joy as Jesus appears to them. Grief, again, as Jesus leaves them to ascend to the Father. And now they're probably scared out of their wits, and it quickly turns to joy as they are filled with the new wine and the new spirit. What an up and down time it's been for them. Yet, as the old quote says, the task before us is never as great as the power behind us. Each disciple receives a share of the power of God's gracious gift of the Holy Spirit for the rest of their lives. They don't just sit there. They get on with it, immediately going out to proclaim God's feats of power in the native languages of all those who gather around them for the celebration. The prophecy of Joel in the Old Testament, chapter 2, is fulfilled as God pours out the divine spirit upon all flesh. Paul, in Romans 8, also declares that we cannot truly belong to Christ apart from the Holy Spirit. If we are in the Spirit, if we are in the Spirit, we have an indestructible newness of life, and the divine presence enables us to renounce the flesh or that part of us that often rebels against doing the will of God. At our baptisms, we receive each of our own very special spiritual gifts through the Holy Spirit. Baptism by water is baptism, and we do not re-baptize. However, we do reaffirm the baptismal covenant a few times during the year. Well, perhaps we receive the Holy Spirit at baptisms with droplets of water falling onto our heads and we're sealed with the sign of the cross pressed into our foreheads, marking us as Christ's own forever. Perhaps some of us were dunked in water. Perhaps some of us had it just sprinkled on our heads lightly. On that day, the congregation around us at our baptism welcomed us into the family of God. I wonder if any of us realize the power transmitted by those liquid drops of hydrogen and oxygen onto our heads. We have received the Spirit of God the power of peace within and without. And perhaps it's time for us to unleash the power. So how do we do it? We do it through using our gifts we received at baptism. At baptism, we were all ordained for ministry, for lay ministry. Later on, some of us were ordained as deacons and priests but we are still all the same baptized in the Holy Spirit. We do how we live that ministry out is, as they say, we must use our gifts or lose them. And how do we do that? Well, there are a myriad of ways. Advent 
advocacy. The Holy Spirit prays on our behalf, interceding regularly for us, to uses us as gifts and advocates and promoters for others. How many others have you promoted, called your ministry out of them? How have you used your own gifts? We also are called to be guides. And we are to guide others in the breath of God's power. And you know what? God's power can also be found in silence. That is, if we take time to listen, to really listen, get rid of our internal stuff that's going on, and just be and listen. We are also called to be interpreters of scriptures. Through the Holy Spirit given to us, we can understand scriptures. Our minds are open like those of the disciples were to see the word of God lurking behind the letters of each page in that Bible. If we take time and read and read and internalize what it says. We are also called to be healers. The Holy Spirit heals, sometimes physically and sometimes emotionally. That is, if we believe that the Holy Spirit always heals that which is broken, that needs fixing. But that healing, that gift to the Holy Spirit, it only begin if we get ourselves out of the way. There's so much more to this, and it's all explicit, all the blazing of fire of the Holy Spirit. The promise of Pentecost is not weak. It is strong. It is empowering. It is emboldened. Have you ever considered that as Episcopalians, we are also Pentecostals. Yes, you heard me correctly. Simply said, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit that fires us up and empowers us for ministry by encouraging us to take the step forward to do the right thing you know what? That's sometimes very scary to do the right thing. But the Holy Spirit will embolden us to do that. An example of this explosive power was on the TV show a long time ago, What Would You Do? The scene was a young man with Down syndrome who portrayed a beggar at a checkout stand. He was being severely abused by an impatient male customer. A woman behind him spoke out strongly in defense of that young man. That was truly the work of the Holy Spirit within her that empowered her. Because as she said to the interviewer who was, while she was trembling, I never had the courage to do that before. So, on this day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, we are called to share our gifts of the Spirit, not to hoard them. So get going, get out there, share the life-giving and empowering Spirit with the world. Simply put, just do it.